Man, a lot of elevation, bro. I say that for sure. Cause like, my bro, I moved down here. Like when I first came, when I first, when you first interviewed me, I had just moved down here. Right. I done been here. How long has it been? Like two months. Yeah. So yeah, shit, that two months, bro. Like so much shit didn't change. Like I'm, a, I feel, I don't feel like a new person. Like I don't change, bro. Like right. I'm Marcus. I'm genuinely Marcus. Right. But that nigga Marcus constantly growing, bro. And so yeah. like that's how that shit work. But how you been? That shit. I feel like the same way too. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Just steady growing, knowing what you need to do with your business, stuff like that. Like trying to come up with a real, a real solid plan. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, nah, that's fact, bro. Cause like, as men, bro, we need foundation because mm -hmm. we gotta be able to survive. So like, if you can't get your your own car, if you can't get your own crib, if you can't buy your own food, bro. Like you definitely have something to work on right. because the people that's providing for you is not gonna be able to provide for you. For the rest of your life right for example the reason why i left my crib is because i wanted to build the mindset of being able to provide on my own like my mom and them they were paying the rent paying the bills buying food shit like that yeah i ain't got to do nothing but make money and i can spend it on what i want to right but when i'm out here i gotta spend it on gas yeah i gotta pay the person i'm staying with like i'm paying yeah. bills bro so like, shit, like and that, that's a lot of things i'll be trying to tell like a lot of people that i know it's like Cause when I was living with my mom, I felt like I thought I was a man mm -hmm. until I actually moved yeah, out. Bro, yeah, it kind of yeah, like yeah. it put a it put you in a different mindset. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I know your parents gonna basically be like most. Some parents be like, Nah, you ain't gotta leave this, this, yeah. that. But like, I yeah. feel like with that extra pressure on you, it kind of builds you into a real adult. Like, you know what I'm saying? I used to be cool with having fifty dollars in my bank account. And right. Then I used to be like. Oh, I'm good because I ain't got to do nothing. But now it's like, I got to have rent and more. I need to have savings. I need to have something going on in case something happens. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so it's like, whenever you really step into that, like, real responsibility, then I feel like that's when you're able to call yourself a man or really just an adult in general. Like, Facts. females, that go for females, male, really anybody. Anybody that could really, like, make a real critical decision i feel like you that's when you really become an adult not just age because it's, it's a lot of people i know that's older than me that they really not adult shit you know what i'm saying but, i could yeah hell yeah i definitely see where you're coming from bro because you can't be comfortable yeah and the minute you get comfortable is the minute like bro you if you your own person like you were saying you an adult like you got to pay for your own shit if you your own person that means you holding up the foundation. You are the foundation. Right. And so the minute you put that shit down because your arm's tired, shit, you can rest, bro, but just don't get comfortable. Yeah. Like, the minute you set your, the minute you drop your foundation, everything that that's holding, everything that that foundation is holding up, gonna fall with that shit. And I done seen it happen, bro. Like, even me personally, like, I was doing a network marketing business, bro, and I was the foundation of that shit. Hmm. And so I had to, how I was doing it, I was teaching people how to make money, ABC, and you already know how that shit go. Right. And I had to mentor them. I'm the foundation of their success because I'm their mentor. Right. I didn't take that responsibility. I got comfortable, I had money, and I was like, shit, they'll be good. Mm -hmm. I said, they'll be good. 30 days later, they're not even in my business no more. Yeah. So it's like, mm -hmm. you can't, you can't drop your foundation, bro, onto nothing. Right. You gotta put your foundation on the foundation so you can rest, bro. And like, that's what we have to work on building as a human, bro. Like foundation, because you have to be able to pass on your foundation. If that right. makes sense, yeah. like to your kids. And so, I feel like at a young age, really, we don't really be thinking about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, hell no. Nah. And that, that's, that's me too. Cause sometimes I be thinking it's just like, it's me. But then if I do out here, you know what I'm saying? Like end up having a kid, it's kind of going to be like, I feel like people get in that mindset after they start having kids. And it's kind of too late, you know what I'm saying? Like it's like they're trying to build their legacy mm -hmm. while their kids are already there. Instead of having it already built up, then your kids come and everything good. Everything you know what I'm good. Uh huh. But shit, I feel like the best people, bro, is made as a kid. Like when a kid is going through the struggle with the parent and they watching that shit, they watching how their parents hustle. Mm -hmm. So now they taking on their hustle. But if you, that's why a lot of bro, have you ever heard the saying that? Um, Weak men create hard times. Hard times create strong men. Strong men create easy times, and easy times create weak men. Hmm. So I never heard that, but that that's facts. That's facts, cause like, shit, 
think about all the spoiled people who just grow up their parents give them everything like their parents got it like that so they just giving them everything for example Bronny LeBron's son LeBron he didn't struggle like LeBron did LeBron grew up damn near homeless bro right. Bronny grew up in a five-star mansion had trainers had all every, all the resources his pops didn't have just so he could become the basketball player he want to be mm. now Bronny's son Unless LeBron leaves something in Bronny to make him another version of LeBron, oh, his son not probably not gonna make it to the league. Yeah. Because the push ain't there. The right. the what is the word that I'm looking for? The intensity, bro. Like there's no intensity and there's no real. Damn, I can't find a word. But we just gonna use intensity. Yeah. But there ain't no intensity going behind, bro. Because. You really don't have to hustle. You yeah. really don't gotta go to the so, league. Bro. All right. So what you say about like. You know, whenever, you know what I'm saying? Like, whenever you come to being successful where you want financially and everything and you had kids, like, how could you even that out to where your kids to really know instead of just being spoiled? You know what I'm saying? Because oh. you're going to want your kids to grow up not having a struggle. And it's like, at the same time, it's like, how you balance that out? You know what okay. I'm saying? Because this is LeBron James. I like, see what you're it's so much money out here. Like, he got so much money, you can't have your... He can't, he can't just go get a regular house to be like, yeah, Hell son, no, you got to like, be humble. Like, it, it's inevitable <laughs> for him to grow yeah. up with wealth. You know what I'm saying? It's LeBron James. So, it's like, how you feel like you could even balance that out with even having this all this money like that? You know what I'm saying? Like, so, before I answer, what you're saying is, like, how could I... How how would you feel like you come into wealth, you a millionaire, billionaire, but you want your kids to have a, a strong appreciation? Oh, like... How can Mentally I pass on a strong mindset, yeah, like while mindset giving them an have. easy time? Right. Okay, bet. Now I see what you ask. So like, honestly, I'm gonna be honest, bro. That's some hard shit to do. Mm -hmm. But Steve Harvey said this shit one time. He was like, bro, it's not about what you leave your kids. It's about what you leave in your kids. So I can pass on a lot of my traits just by talking to them on some mindset shit and showing them struggle in the world. Like they don't have to struggle. So like, it's never really gonna fully duplicate into them the struggle because they didn't actually have to go through that shit but right. a wise man can look at somebody else's mistakes and learn from their mistakes a smart man can make a mistake and learn from their own mistakes and a dumb man is just gonna keep making mistakes and so like the kid bro i would put him in situations purposely so he can make a mistake yeah like i teach him how to ride a bike everything is psychological bro it don't matter what you're doing i just show him how to ride a bike He's going to struggle that first time, but I'm going to let him know, bro, when you fall, you got to get up. Right. Because if you quit here, you'll never know how to ride a bike. Right. And so I'll put that principle in his mindset. It's just a bunch of different principles that we got to follow as men. Hmm. Like, don't give up. Do what you got to do. Motherfucking be diligent. I'm going to just let the kid know shit, bro. If I ask you to do something, surprise me. Yeah. Meaning he going to be diligent. So if I ask you to do the dishes, surprise me. Clean the counters, too. Like... That we just have to help our children build a mindset of shit. This the best mindset a parent can ever pass on to their kid. And I'm going to say this shit because I know it's true, bro. You got to be the person that will plant a tree seed knowing you will never be able to sit in the shade. And if you could pass that mindset on to your kids, bro, they're going to start doing shit for the world without expecting shit in return. Mm -hmm. And that's the type of person, if we all was like that, money wouldn't even exist, bro. Yeah, for real. Because we'll just, like, how we doing it, bro? Nobody paid for this shit, bro. I'm yeah. saying we paid for those gas, bro. We doing uh -huh. this shit out of love, yeah, bro. Yeah, for real. Imagine if Ford and Chevy and all that shit made everything out of just love, bro. Like, fuck the money, bro. Y'all can just, I'm going to make cars because I love cars, bro. Right. And I love the earth. So I'm going to just make a bunch of cars. I ain't got to pay for them. If every car creator did that shit, every gas station said, fuck buying shit, bro. Y'all can just come in here and y'all can grab what y'all want. Cause I love y'all, bro, and I know y'all not gonna be greedy because y'all got enough. Y'all abundant. If we was abundant as a planet, and we can pass that mindset onto our children, that you are abundant and you can pass on your abundance, right. that's how we gonna get them out yeah. there. Uh, that soft mind shit. Mm -hmm. No cap, hell. I yeah. feel like that that come from really probably having a relationship with God too. Though you feel that's me? Facts, like, bro. Hell yeah. It is a lot of times where you know, like, to get some money. It's a lot of people they say to get to where you wanna. You know what I'm saying? Get you gotta do certain things like that you don't want to do like 
And not saying the working hard part, but sometimes you be seeing a lot. That's why when somebody rich, they be like, oh, they in the Illuminati. They had to sacrifice. Yeah, like, they had to do this. Because <laughs> it's always that gonna be that little narrative. Like, you gotta do something bad to get something good. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. oh, well, you know what I mean? That it's shit like, deep. I don't know. I, I really don't. That's why I be saying, like, I want my career to go up, but I don't never want to compromise my, my morals or nothing like that. So have no fame. Because it's easy to, you know what I'm saying, go out. I could, you could go out and do all type of stuff. You feel me? Get a million views. But it's like, at the end of the day, like, if you want to really be, like, a solid person, you got to move with morals. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, a lot of people oh, fast, don't move bro. with no morals. Ain't it's no like, morals nowhere around this country, bro. Because it's like, you that's can, fast, you can make money off not having morals. Right. People just want to look People won't look at something they ain't never seen before. It'll True. be somebody go risk their whole life to entertain somebody. You know what I'm saying? And it's mm. like, they know and they not finna do it because they like, I got common sense. But it's like, the people that don't got it, it's like, you look at it, it's like, a, I don't know. It's kind of like you just looking at it, like, entertainment, even though there's people real lives. Just like with Thug and Young Thug and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that man really been in jail all this time. And all people can say is really free thug. Free thug. You know what I'm saying? But that man got a real family. He really got like a real life. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you look at other people's life, and it's like you looking at it like it's a game. You know what I'm saying? Like, because you can't really, you don't see them. Yeah. Like if somebody died, and you just seeing people saying RIP, you can't really feel it unless you really know them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So and I like, feel like this. It all come down to connection and vibration, bro. Like what you were saying, shit, about the morals, bro. When we move around this whole with morals, God ain't even enough. God is a moral, bro. Right. And it's a moral and a responsibility and a principle to give God thanks, bro. Right, Why niggas don't do that shit? And so it's like we, we don't give God thanks. We don't show gratitude. So it's kind of harder for us to feel some type of way about Young Thug being locked up. Cause we not grateful for what he doing for us. We just listening to his music like, oh, that shit go hard, going to the next. But think about his fans that's actually grateful for the impact that he made on their life, bro. Like, it's probably a nigga. Bro, all them YSL members, bro, they all in snitch, bro. Like, it was a YSL member that said, like, bro, he's a mentor to me. He's a leader. He changed my life. Him saying Free Thug come from a different place, bro. It come from the heart. Right. Other people saying Free Thug come from the mind, bro. And it's just niggas trying to be like each other because they ain't got nothing here. Everything in store here is like you were saying, bro. Morals, and so in reality, I just really feel like, bro, if we all came together and set boundaries as a society, bro, instead of laws and shit, because we got well, we do set boundaries, bro. We just vote on them, and that's a law. So we just vote on boundaries, like shit, nigga. You can't run a red light, and you can't sell weed, and so hmm. like that's a boundary that niggas don't want to cross, but yeah. it's not an agreed upon boundary. And so it's like, I ain't gonna cap. I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> We're gonna start somewhere else. Yeah. So. <laughs> all right, what you, all right. What's your, your tell, take on like mental health, really? Cause me, I was mental health awareness month too. Yeah, That's see, I, okay, I'm gonna say my take on it first. With me, you know, just living life and really understanding, like, I feel like a lot of people do find comfort other people that's why they rush into relationships you know what i'm saying like it's easier to like loneliness i feel like loneliness it kind of gets you in your head a lot you know what i'm saying like if people sitting up with they self a lot most people scared of that you know what i'm saying because it's like damn i'm bored and i ain't getting no love you know what i'm saying and i feel like most people feel like it ain't no way to just feel love with somebody not giving you affection i feel like a lot of people like confuse affection with love you know what i'm saying and mm. like even me sometimes i feel like you know what i'm saying if, if females ain't blowing up your phone or if you don't got somebody to come home to you be like damn like you feel lonely or, you know what i'm saying yeah and i feel like a lot of people they scared to be just with they self like look, you really think about it like mm. the average person what do they really give time to they self like Probably. Like you scrolling on your phone all day. Yeah, you, yeah, they wake up, check their phone. Yeah, like you never really got time to really just think for yourself. So I feel like that probably told on a lot of people mental health. Cause it's like for us, right. probably smoking, drinking, they go out, go.
go to work, they get up, they on their phones. Like, you never really had time to just sit and think. You know I feel like a solution to a lot of that shit is just like you were saying, bro. It's just reversing. What are you doing? Like, bro, actually sit down with yourself. Niggas wake up and check their phone. Then immediately after they done checking their phone, they might cut on the TV, might watch the news, they might start tapping into what society got going on. Right. And then shit, they gotta go clock in. So he get up, go to work. And then shit, he doing everything for his manager. He ain't did shit for himself today, bro. He doing everything for his manager and all that shit. Then guess what? He get off. Some niggas go to the gym. Some people just go home, cook dinner, go to sleep. Other people get off and go do their other hustle or whatever they got going on, bro. It's like a majority of their day, bro, is consumed by somebody else. Right. So we don't ever have time, like you said, shit, to just sit down and think, bro. Like, what's making me feel this way? Why am I low, bro? Why do I feel depressed? Why do I... Why, what would I rather be feeling than what I'm feeling right now and why? And then you're going to figure out, oh, shit, I'm feeling like this because that happened, that happened, that happened, and that happened. And I would rather feel like this, but this shit happened. And so it's like, I feel like the real cause of depression is what you were saying. You don't give time to yourself. Number two, you don't know who you are and you don't know who you want to be because you don't give time to yourself. Number three, you're unhealthy, you're not in shape, and you're not happy with the way you look. Why? Because you don't give time to yourself. Yeah. And shit, last one, bro, the diets, really. And the diets, uh, the reason why I say diets, bro, is because it's been times where I've had no reason to complain, bro. Mm -hmm. No reason at all. Everybody healthy, I'm healthy, life is good, today is amazing, and there's no reason I should be depressed. And I was depressed that day. Why? Because I ate a pizza earth. Mm -hmm. And that cheese in my body is tearing my shit up. And my body is responding to that negatively. Right. And this is your first brain, bro. This is where most of your serotonin is produced. I heard, Depression I is heard just that before too. A man. lack of serotonin. Yeah. So when all your serotonin is not even being produced in here because you got so much junk and trash in here, yes, you're going to be depressed. Because shit, you got a fucking, uh, what's that shit called? A chemical imbalance. Yeah. So like... I really feel like a lot of the mental health issues could literally be solved if, like, literally what you said, bro, people would just give them, give time to themselves. Put your phone down. Look at the life in front of you, bro. Why do you not like it? What is wrong with this shit in front of you, bro? Yeah. Like, there's, bro, there's nothing I could ask for to make this situation better. Nothing. Right. Everything else is a bonus, bro. And when you look at life like that, as everything is a bonus and you're alive, everything that you add on top of being alive is just a bonus. When you look at life like that, all that mental health shit go away. Because you realize, shit, I'm asking for too much. I want too much and I'm focused on too many things and I'm not grateful for what God has promised me, which is life. God don't owe us shit and we constantly ask God for something. God is here keeping all of us alive, bro, at the same time. God protecting all them people in them cars over there. God protected me and you and all them niggas driving back there and all the fish in the sea. What more can we ask for? We alive, bro. And we got to be alive to keep the shit that we asking God for. So, like, I feel like God look at us a lot of times. And I feel like we feel the way God feel, which is depressed. God is upset with us and he's sad at us because shit. We don't show no appreciation to the nigga. Right. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> shit. That's where the mental health come from, bro. Like, if you keep, like you said earlier, bro, you keep God in your life, bro, and you cast your worries on the God, your fears on the God, your anxiety on the God, whatever you think God is, bro, that don't even matter. Whatever you pray to, bro, all your worries go to that. All your fears go to that. All the shit you can't control goes to that. Right. What can you, what can you control? Well, I can control everything in front of me. Literally, that's it. And it's so crazy that you say that because, like, I remember when I was, like, living with my mom and them, I was like, damn, if I could just have this, everything have would be it. good. You know what I'm saying? I remember when I didn't have a car, I was like, if I could just get a car, I'd be good. You know, when I got my apartment. You know, before I had my apartment, I'm like, if I could just have my own little spot to do my thing, everything would be good. And it's kind of like, now it's like, I write what shit. If I could have a big old apartment, my dream car, everything would be good. It's like, if I could have this amount of money, board, everything bro. would be good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if I could just have a million dollars, I wouldn't want nothing else. Yeah. Then once you get an MU, 
if I could just get a you know what I'm saying? That's like why you want all these. It's like shit, you it, bro. it'll never be enough, you know what I'm saying? Man. Like from from women to money to cars, clothes, like all of that really'll never be enough. Even though it's stuff that we like, like you will see somebody with all that. That's mm -hmm. why it'd be like it's rich facts. people be committing suicide and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like I feel like that that really don't fulfill you. Like, yeah, I look good on the outside. Like, yeah, I feel good when I put on clothes and I feel like I look good. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, but it's like, once that go away, it's like, what else? You know what I'm saying? Like, what Damn, else really it's is deep. it? deep. Good shit, bro. I really feel like it's love, bro. That's the reason why a lot of niggas not happy and they just want more. Because they don't have love, whether it's outside or inside. And shit. Rich folks have a lot of love outside, none inside. Mm -hmm. I ain't saying all the rich folks, but the ones you were saying kill themselves, shit. They, bro, they're a lost soul. They got all this shit, <laughs> everything in the world, bro, yeah. with no soul. They didn't sell it. They just lost it, trying to right. be this yeah, person. Right. And so, if you just, I'm glad I found my soul, bro, and I'm glad I found that who who I wanted to be as a person, because. Honestly, if I would have had everything I have now lost as a soul, bro, I would be making some random ass content. So what, how do you feel like you consider yourself in the mental state that you're in right now? Like, do you feel like you happy or do you feel like you I'm definitely at peace. I ain't felt this peaceful in my life because I'm not worried about tomorrow or yesterday. I'm just locked in in the present moment. That's where I find most of my peace. But I'm still learning how to be happy, bro. Because it's, it's situations that upset me. It's not supposed to upset me. It's literally just supposed to teach me. Right. And I don't want it to teach me because I ain't ready to be taught yet. I just want to enjoy what I was enjoying without all the stress and stuff like that. But I learned how to be happy with suffering, bro. Like, I did ass learn how to just endure pain and like be happy with being in pain. Like it's time, like I love stress, bro. I, I don't know if that's good or bad, but I love stress. Like I would rather be stressed out than not stressed out. Mm. And not stressed out by the situation, but stressed out in a motivated way. Like nigga shit, I got these bills to pay. I need to do this. And if I don't get these bills paid, that's not gonna, you know, that's gonna fall through. And that causes my stress. Mm -hmm. Or I go to the gym, work out, boom, I'm stressing my body out right there. And so like, my mental state, bro, I'm happy, bro. Yeah. And it's not, it's not because of what I got. It's yeah. not because of who I am. It's because I found love within myself, bro. Right. Like I don't want nothing else. Like a car would be nice right now. And a, a crib would be nice right now. More money would be nice right now. Hell, a new wardrobe would be nice. But. What's up, doggos? What we? A dog would be. A dog. <laughs> like, uh -huh. a but, like, a bunch of. The bonuses would yeah. be nice in my life, bro. But if you took all the clothes off my back, everything from in front of me, all my pages on social media, and just threw that shit in the trash, I'd be happy, bro. Because I got love. Like, that's. We take something from a man, the only thing he has left is love. And if he don't got love within himself, bro, he's gonna realize he has no purpose on this planet and he's gonna kill himself. The only reason I can accept that I don't have a purpose on this planet, I make one because I love myself, bro. And what I'm saying is, it's purpose or pleasure. And I learned to mix purpose and pleasure. And I find pleasure in my purpose, bro. How you get to that point though? Like, of how, just like peace of mind? Yeah, like how you get to that point of just being like, you know what they I'm saying? go, bro. I ain't gonna count. A lot of people scared of death. That's why they do what they do. I ain't scared of death. And I honestly thought to myself, if I died, would I be let but would I be ready to let everything go? My family, my friends, my identity, everything. Would I be ready to let that go? I said, yeah. That brought me so much happiness, bro, because I realized I'm not attached to anything, any result, or any type of work that I do. I'm just doing it. And I'm not even attached to my myself, bro. I'm not attached to Marcus. I'm not attached to Von Intelligent. I'm not attached to this ego. I'm just observing everything that's going on, bro. And I, that's how I got happy. 
I start observing my life and I start realizing I'm not this body. I'm the one paying attention to it. And so it's like going to a park and watching your kid play. You just take your kid to the park. You're not going to the park. Yeah. You just you just take your kid to the park and play. The kid is the ego. Right. That's your child self, your ego. The higher self is just your parent, bro. So you the parent of your ego. You gave birth to your ego. You gotta observe that shit and watch it and let it play, bro. Cause the ego gonna have fun. The ego gonna learn. It's gonna do what it's supposed to do. But don't attach yourself to any situation. Don't attach yourself to any kind of result, bro. Like if your life start going wrong and shit, don't beat yourself up, bro. Cause it's not you. It's the body, bro. And yes, take accountability for your life going wrong. I ain't saying just shit. It ain't my fault. Nah, don't do that. But accept everything that come your way because life ain't supposed to be easy. Life isn't meant to go your way. Yeah. And life ain't meant to be good all the time because good is just a concept. Bad is a concept. And I know that. So when I, when I look at a situation, I can say, damn, this is a bad situation. Or I can say, damn, this is a good situation. Yeah. And so I just look at everything. I take everything with a grain of salt, bro. I don't take life serious at all. Mm -hmm. I take stability serious because I will pass that on to my kids. But outside of stability, what else is there to worry about? Like literally, I don't have to worry about being nobody. I don't have to worry about acting. I don't have to worry about making nobody happy, bro. What about what about love? I guess, yeah. Love is stability, I guess. Like, do you feel like, like, I feel like that's what most people, they, they end up chasing too. Like, do you, do you believe in like true love? Hell yeah. But I honestly feel like it would be more options to true love. The world running out of love. And I can tell you that now. People do not care about each other. Mm -hmm. But when you bring two people together that love themselves so much that they can give love off, love off to somebody else and not worry about getting nothing in return or not worrying about if they just run off with it and play what they love, they'll still be happy and whole inside. If two people that's happy and whole inside come together, bro, and share who they are as people with each other, and just be and be happy together, bro, that's true love. Mm -hmm. Like, that's true love. They're not wanting shit out of nobody. They not. True love is unconditional love. Conditional love is what a lot of society run on, bro. It's conditional love. All right, I love you as long as you do this. For example, your boss. Your boss only love you because you their employee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dead ass. Like, if you wasn't their employee, they would not give a fuck about you. Right. The person that you... Hell, a lot of relationships is based off conditions, bro. As long as you look like this, act like this, and do A, B, and C, I'll love you. But if you don't do none of that shit, if you don't fit any qualities, I can't fuck with you no more. Yeah. That's why a lot of relationships end so early after six months to a year to two years. And then you got some that last for 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Why? Because shit, the ones that last for 30, 40, 50, 60 years, they love them for simply being alive, bro. They don't want them to do shit. They realize that they are already alive, bro. They are their own energy. And everything else that they add on top of their character is just a bonus as to who they really are, bro. Right. And that is, I don't know. Do you, do you believe in, like, mm, do you believe in love at first sight? Hell yeah. I feel like everything. Or do you think that's lust? Cause I seen a video somebody was saying. Now that's that's no hard. That's hard. It was I ain't like, gonna count. No such thing as love at first sight is lust. Lust that And first I feel sight. like I do believe in love at first sight. Cause I feel like you could see a female, you'd be like, she bad. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? That's but lust. Like yeah, but it's like it gotta be somebody, somebody special. You'd be like. You know how you'll see this a uh, girl and you just she'll be, like, be bro, bad and she'll be in the yeah, yeah she'll be bro. in the back of your mind mm -hmm. and you'll be like I wonder what she doing and y'all not even like you know what I'm saying yeah, like hell yeah I don't know what that I don't That's know hard, what that bro. means that shit beautiful too I I I, drew, I believe in love at first sight bro yeah because everything is frequency and if a future version of myself the future version of yourself is telling you bro. That's your girl, nigga. Like, yeah. that's your girl, bro. Go shoot. Yeah. And so if you don't do that, <laughs> yeah, the future version of yourself still in love with them, but you're not about to go down that timeline because yeah. you didn't even decide to talk to them. So you're going to be on a whole different universe, bro. Yeah. Whole different timeline, whole different dimension where you never met this person. And on this dimension, 
shit, you in love with this person, bro. And you fuck around, got a family with this person, which is why you had love at first sight, because your soul knows something that you don't. You know what's so crazy? What that remind me of? You ever watched this movie called The Butterfly Effect? Nah, you put me need on, to watch it, bro. On. That's that's exactly kind of what happened. Cause it's basically like, shit. See if I just seen you right there. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? We never chopped it up or nothing like that. Mm. It would have oh, been different, shit. like, you know what I'm saying? Or imagine. Where you going, bro? You know what I'm saying? It just like it, it showed different alternative lives. You need to watch mm. that movie. Cause exactly the what you just said. Thing. That's exactly what that is. Like, that's, that's hard, exactly bro. what it's it is. Hard. But that's a. It made me think, cause I'm like, damn. I started doing videos, cause I got an iPhone. I would just, I wanted to be like one of them Instagram comedian dudes. Yeah. Like, so I was like, let me learn how to use my phone and make videos. Then I was like, shit, I need to learn how to make a little short film. Then I start trying to shoot music videos off my phone. Then I just was like, let me get a camera. Mm -hmm. It just kept going up. But imagine if I would have just been like. I never seen all them people that are doing these videos. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. that would have never came to your mind. Oh, and then it's so crazy. My dad wanted me to play football real bad. Mm -hmm. So imagine I was just like, you know what? I'm going to the NFL. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, you I would have been, been, been a whole different type of person. Life, you feel bro. me? Like, it's, it's a lot of things that it just was like, nigga. I remember I wanted to be in the WWE. I remember <laughs> I wanted to be you know, gymnastics, go to the Olympics. Like, Damn. it's just crazy where life will lead you. Like, when. All these things presented to you, you know what I'm saying? Cause mm -hmm. it's like, shit, I'm pretty sure when you was young, you probably never thought of, you know what I'm saying? You would be talking about the stuff you talk about now. Man, like, what? You would never shit, think in a million bro, years. Three years ago, I'm thinking I'm getting ready to go to college, play basketball, bro. Right. I learned some shit on the shroom trip, bro. And it literally all came down to choices. It said, the only reason you tripping is cause you chose to trip. Nobody made you do it. Mm -hmm. You chose to. And so, in my head, I'm like, bro, where do choices come from? The future version of yourself, bro. Mm -hmm. Your future version of yourself is helping you and guiding you to make the right decisions. A lot of us will make a decision and then feel that shit in our stomach and be like, I shouldn't have made this decision. Nigga, that feeling came from the future version of yourself. Yeah. If you, the future version of yourself is like, bro, that's not the right idea because there's nowhere near in alignment with the path that we decided to be on when we came to Earth. And so, boom, you get here. Every decision you make is going to lead to another decision, bro. This decision going to lead to two more decisions. And then this decision, gonna, these two decisions going to lead to four more decisions. And so it's like, you got all these damn decisions to make, bro. You just got to choose the right one. It's kind of like stepping stones. You know how some stones be unstable. Other stones be slippery. Some stones be stable. And shit, some stones just going to fall when you step on it. Mm -hmm. You got to make the right choice to step on the right stones, bro. Because life is like chess, bro. Like dead ass. This shit just like chess. Yeah, for real. Every move you make, if you fuck up somewhere in life, somewhere in the past, you made the wrong choice. Me, for example, bro, if I would have kept the job I had, I would have been in my own whip right now. The one I wanted. Yeah. But I made a choice to leave. Now, the fact that I made a choice to leave was because my soul told me, get out of here because you have A, B, and C to do. If I would have been working at that job, I would have been there right now, and I wouldn't be here. Right. You feel me? So it's like everything happened for a reason, bro. And back to what you were saying about love at first sight, everything happened for a reason. The reason you're feeling this inside of you is because your future version of yourself is sending you signals to, hey, pursue that because she is in alignment with your path, and she can dead -ass, she's like dead-ass needed at this point in your life. Mm. Like, for example, I met my brother when I was in fifth grade bro now we at a point in my life to where shit i'm living with him now mm -hmm. i only met him because shit i decided to go outside that day yeah now it's convenient for this part of my life because shit it's kind of like keys bro you know how you uh, play a uh like a game or some shit mm -hmm. and you got to keep the keys in your pocket and then whenever you get to the door shit yeah. you got to use that shit to unlock the, key, uh, uh -huh. unlock the door yeah don't abandon parts of yourself and don't listen to your intuition, bro. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Because your intuition is going to tell you that's the key that you need to open that door. That's the key you need. You need to throw that key away mm -hmm. and shut that door because that's not where we're going. You need to go here. Use this key, a.k.a. a person, situation, a motherfucking opportunity. Anything, bro, can be a key to get you to another door. Because this is how God works. God will put a whole bunch of doors in front of you 
The one you go through is gonna close a bunch of bu a bunch of doors behind you. And then it's gonna be a whole bunch of doors after you go through that door. And so it's like God gives you infinite options, bro. Right. God will give you, if you ask God for a cake, he's not gonna straight up give you the cake. He's gonna give you all the ingredients to bake it. Mm. A whole bunch of different flavors, a whole bunch of different types of icing, different types of flour, it, all these ingredients, bro. 